and that would be by taking, getting most farms everywhere to harvest not just the food, but also the, the straw, the, the waste products, uh, and then turn it to charcoal. And either, as they've done in Brazil, the native people back in the past, plow it back into the earth, or if that's decide, they decide that isn't practical, bury it, just drop it in the ocean. Because once you've turned agricultural waste into charcoal, it stays as carbon. It never changes. Nothing eats it. It doesn't oxidize in the atmosphere. And unless you burn it, it'll just stay as carbon. And that's the way you use nature. You use the biosphere as the plants grow to pump the CO2 out of the air for you at no cost whatever. In fact, again, because you still have the seeds to eat, it's just you take that huge part of the plant that isn't seed, that you don't eat, and turn it into charcoal. Measures such as uh, carbon capture, you don't think uh, are going to do any good? No, I don't. I think there's an awful lot of scams going on. You see, the moment governments put large subsidies out to do something rather, any entrepreneur uh, with a good idea comes along and says, oh, I can solve the whole problem, and they make fortunes out of it. Everything from, uh, you name it, wind turbines, uh, uh, solar cells used in northern Europe, like Germany, they're all a waste of time. They're not going to do anything good, but they make an awful lot of money. It is uh, the idea of harnessing energy from other sources, uh, how effective you think that can be from well, the sun to, to bioenergy? Really. Well, some forms of renewable energy, like hydroelectricity, have a lot to be said for them, and we've used them. And I think the sensible thing to go by, the, the acid test, is does it need a subsidy? If it, may, if it works just as is, and makes a profit for someone, and provides a useful gain of electricity, then fine, encourage it. But if the government has to subsidize it, beware because almost invariably it will be the subject of scams. But then we come into this very controversial uh, position that you have, that a lot of environmentalists have you attack, attacked you for, which is the defense of the nuclear energy. Hmm. Nuclear energy nowadays does require subsidy, doesn't it? No. It doesn't? No. no. It does require subsidy because uh, the restrictions placed on it um, by legislation are so great that before you can set up a, a, a new, nuclear, new nuclear power station, it costs an absolute fortune uh, in lawyers' fees and that kind of thing. If that were not there, then they don't require subsidies. Indeed, the first ones were not subsidized. But the thing itself does not concern you in terms of threat to, to the environment, threat to human beings, the danger of radiation, contamination, and nuclear waste, that is not a major concern, you don't think? No, it's it just uh, a, um, a dream vision that has no truth in it. You see, the whole universe is nuclear powered. Every star in the universe runs by nuclear powers. Our sun does. Uh, the Earth is full of radioactivity, and so are you and me. We, we both have enough radioactivity in us naturally that some crazy person uh, uh, an anti-nuclear person said it's dangerous to sleep together. But how about nuclear waste? That's that's a same thing. Yeah. It, what waste? What nuclear waste? Uh, my wife and I were invited to France, which is almost entirely run on nuclear energy, uh, by Areva, the well, their main company, and taken to La Hague, where they have the most of their nuclear high-level nuclear waste is buried. And it's buried in a room about the size of a cinema. And the floor of the room is three meters of concrete, fairly thick. And the, the waste is dropped down holes in the concrete by a special machine. Standing on the floor, we found that the radiation level was about the same as in this room now. In other words, absolutely harmless and mm. safe. And the whole process was safe. And years and years of all of the electricity of France, practically, was buried the effects of it was buried down there. It's not a problem, no problem at all. Just imagine, look at the waste there is of coal ash outside coal-fired power stations. Uh, thousands of times more than that. And it's not nice stuff. It's got arsenic and all sorts of things in it. 
And uh, the but the biggest waste of all, of course, is the carbon dioxide in the air, which is gigantic. And the the fear that the general public has, for instance, based on accidents that have taken place in the past, that that tends to create a little bit of panic. But it's all lies. You see, in give you an example, in this country, in most European countries, they've had nuclear energy. We've had it here for forty years. What's the, how many people have died as a result of it? The answer is none. How many people have been injured in the industry? The answer is none. So what's the danger? I mean, it's, it's complete lies. Almost every other industry, even renewable energy industries, lots of people die. The most dangerous industry of all, as far as energy goes, is water power. Just think what happens when a dam bursts. Supplying oh, the, the hydroelectric, yes, hydroelectric you can kill, power, you can kill huge which is numbers obviously of people. A, a big deal in yes, Brazil. Yes, yes, you can kill huge numbers of people. Uh, Whereas nuclear killed no one. So what are they fussed about? To be sure, there was an accident in Russia at Chernobyl, but Russia was a special case. It was in the old Soviet system, and that the, 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 the it, it, it was a society where. Uh, that was so disordered, it was on the verge of collapsing of its own weight anyway, and did. You must, uh, I'm sure you must get a lot of flack from your old uh, allies in the environmental uh, field. But I'm why sure. do you think they protest so much against this position you have on nuclear, uh, the nuclear issue? Is it old habits, prejudice, what is it? No, it's politics, really. You see, we all of us were absolutely scared stiff of an all-out nuclear war between Russia and America uh, during the, uh, all of the period after World War II up until the Soviet Union collapsed. And that would have been devastating. That would have wrecked life for everybody. And somehow in their minds they got mixed up between nuclear bombs and nuclear energy, which is, to me as a scientist is as silly as mixing up ordinary chemical explosives with getting energy from burning gasoline in your car. It's not the same thing at all. This idea of this effort to run away from uh, the carbon energy, carbon-based energy, uh, fossil fuel. We benefited a little bit re recently from uh, the rise in the price of oil, which made people think of alternatives. Right. But right now, we're going through an economic crisis, and the price of oil is going down. Do you yeah. fear that people will just go back to the old habits? And I, I think so. The